Today I will talk about my new project, a fully automated lighting system for my smart home. What's up guys, my name is Sim and you're watching Smarter Stuff, a channel where I show you how I design and build my smart home. If you're new to this channel, want to see more of what I do and want to learn how to create projects for your own smart home. Start now by subscribing and click on the bell icon so you can notify when I upload a new video. And I do that every week. So why did I choose to get started with lighting first? Well, undoubtedly, lighting is a crucial part of any home. It's the first thing you use in the morning and the last thing in the evening. Moreover, automating lighting is usually the first step people take when turning their home into a smart home. And it only seems fitting that I start here as well. Plus, I want to have at least the bare bones ready and designed before I start running any wires in my home. I'm sure you know, own, or at least have heard about smart light bulbs like Philips Hue, Xiaomi E-Light or C-Wave bulbs. And might think, why don't I just use them? Well, there's actually two main reasons why I decided to build my own system. It doesn't really matter what sort of make or model bulb you're looking at, the price range is roughly the same. If I would only need one or two bulbs, I'd go out and spend the 20 or 30 euros. But what if I need 40? The price really adds up quick, and I can't justify spending that sort of money on something that doesn't pick my other box. The major downside with commercial systems for me is that the intelligence is scattered around the house. My goal is to have all the thinking and processing done in one central location. It might just be me, but I can't see a reason why a light bulb needs to be smart. The system controlling the bulb has to be smart though. Saying that, I understand that a lot of times building a whole new system isn't viable, and that's where those sort of products are suited best. But because I'm building everything from the ground up, I have the opportunity to run wires and make decisions that I wouldn't be able to do if I would just be doing light renovation. To have complete control over each light and be able to set the ambience, the lights need to be dimmable. For that, I'm designing a control board that uses an Atmega 328P microcontroller, has 10 separate outputs for 240V AC and is able to control the light intensity for each output from a full 100% down to 10% and then of course have it off at 0%. These boards can be chained together 20 boards at a time, giving the maximum total of 200 outputs. Controlling all these boards is a master, also using the Atmega 328P and with a W5500 Ethernet chip on board. The master and all the slaves will be connected via I2C. This requires only two wires for communication, which is really convenient, and a common ground connection. I will also add 5V power supply, so powering the boards will be done from the same bus. Next, the master is connected to a local network router or a switch via an Ethernet cable. The machine that runs OpenHAP, in my case the Pine64, is also connected to the same network. Then there is a touchscreen that has HAP panel, connected via Wi-Fi. To connect the light switches, I'm using the same master board as with the light dimmers. The input boards, also with the Atmega chip, are designed to have 10 inputs each. And same as before, chained together via bus with I2C and power. To those boards, I can connect light switches, motion sensors, etc. All these boards do is monitor the inputs that are pulled high and if a switch is pressed, the line is connected to ground which pulls the input low and thus signaling a button push. My whole idea is to build a Lego-like system. There are a lot of small but similar blocks that when assembled differently give different functionality. And it has to be reasonably easy to take the blocks apart and reassemble them. For example, when changing the code on the slave board, it's possible to have different functions on one switch. Pressing a switch for less than one second turns on or off a specific light. Pressing it for more than three seconds might turn on or off all the lights within a given radius. Because the light switch isn't actually connected to the light itself, it's a separate block. I don't necessarily have to use it for a light at all. If after a while I find that I don't use the switch for switching a light, I could write new code and use it for the alarm system, radio or the sprinklers. I hope you see what my goal here is. 
If you think it's a good idea or a bad idea, let me know below in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think about this. Now I will quickly give you an idea which way the information and data will flow in my system. Starting from boot, all the lights are turned off. Firstly, the slave boards. After boot and before any lights are controlled, they let the master know that boot was successful and they are ready to receive commands. The master acknowledges that and publishes an MQTT message, saying that the system is good to go. The message goes through the MQTT broker to OpenHAB. An OK flag is then set and the system is online. When given a command through HAB panel, it is processed in OpenHAB and an MQTT command is published. The command then goes to the master board. There the command is passed and sent to the correct slave. Now the slave takes the values and turns on the requested light at the correct intensity. Every 50 milliseconds, the master requests information about the lights from the slave. Once given the information, it then compares the new information to the information from the last request, and if it's different, publishes an MQTT message with the slave value. That is to always have accurate data in OpenHAB of what state the lights are actually at. Now we have data constantly moving back and forth. Commands going in and state values going out. Let's add an external switch. As with the output boards, there is a master and slave. The slaves constantly monitor the inputs, and if a change is registered that meets all the required parameters, the information of the corresponding input is stored. The master periodically asks for updates. If there has been an update, it publishes an MQTT message. Once OpenHAB has received the command, it then makes necessary decisions and sends a command to the output master. From there, the same operations are performed as before with the HAB panel command. Note that the output master or slave have no idea who wants to change the light values. And also the input master and slaves don't know anything about any lights. Each part or block is completely oblivious of other parties in the system. And that is exactly what I'm trying to achieve. With the block approach, I could change out one part of the system, upgrade it or update it without having to worry about doing anything to the other blocks. And that is it for this video. I'm really curious about what you think of my approach and the hardware layout I proposed. Good or bad, let me know below in the comments. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon so you'll be notified of a new video. In the next one, I'll show you the output slave prototype, the schematics and the code. Until then, take care and I'll see you next time.